welterweight division matchup. So here he is, one of the better offensive takedown guys we have in the UFC DC. And if anyone is well equipped to speak to this, it is you. The opponent knows what's coming. At least to this point in the UFC, no one's been able to stop. He just has to keep him away. Because the moment this guy gets close enough to either grab a leg or make body contact, right. now you're in trouble. He has a knowledge and an understanding of position from a lifetime of just all grappling, judo, wrestling, uh, Sambo, he does it all, and he has just so many ways to get you to the floor. This guy once told me that if you can get your leg, he's going to finish. Right. Because he's going to give you so many things to think about, you will not be able to process and keep up with him, and eventually you're on the mat. It's unbelievable to watch him apply that knowledge to the mixed martial arts fight. And as the wrestlers say, this is not a guy you want anywhere near your bracket. No, you don't want him in the bracket. Well, pretty much every time out in the UFC, DC, this man has put on a striking clinic, and that is his methodology coming in here tonight. He'll try to keep the fight on the feet. And that's why we tune in, right? That's why we tune in. We tune in to see guys that are dynamic. We tune in for the speed. We tune in for the knowledge of the striking game, the ability to set traps, the ability to find the jab, the ability to find the right hand, the right kick, the left kick, the knees, the elbows. He truly uses every weapon that he has in his arsenal to try and finish his opponents. You make one mistake, night's over. You cannot make mistakes against a guy that has the striking acumen yeah. of this guy right here. And the jab is not as underutilized a weapon as it was in MMA, say, five or seven years ago, but he's got as good a jab as anyone in the business, and that is where all of his striking flows off of. We'll see how it goes for him in this matchup tonight. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. More than five years apart, with similar height and some differences in reach. All right, just about ready to go here now Ladies for the particulars. We go inside the octagon the here is Bruce Welterweight Bob. division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 10 wins, no losses. He stands six feet two inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden, Hobbs at Bors Chibaya! And now to his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A boxer holding a professional record of 18 wins, seven losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Beijing, China, Lee, the Leech King Leon! And when the action begins, a referee in charge, Eve Levine. The veteran Eve Levine draws the assignment here. You ready? You ready? All right, so here we go with the start of this fight. I'm anxious, man. What a matchup it is, and it's going to be interesting. And it's going to be interesting to see who has the upper hand. Over. It's going to be difficult to find out how this plays out, right? Striker versus well-rounded fighter. Who's going to be the one that's going to control where this fight takes place? All right, here we go. First round is underway. No denying a big reach advantage for him tonight. We'll see if he can get that jab going early. Look for him to circle on the outside. Use that long jab to keep his distance and only engage on his terms. Big punch lands over the top. How's he going to follow this one? Look at him yank the head and land that beautiful punch from the clinch. And he landed the right hand there. Perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by the counter. Tosses him down. Now we'll see if he can advance position. I mean, right into side control. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch. Now he's attacking the triangle. The triangle looks pretty tight, DC. I'm no Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like it's getting in deep. A triangle, a triangle. He's to push the arm to the side. Get his head against the mat. Now watch as he goes to the finish. Watch his chest go to the mat. He goes getting to tighter. Submission 
defense there. All right, right into side control here, DC. Biggest difference between half guard and side control. Well, side control to me feels like a little bit less control because now my legs aren't really doing anything anymore. Now I'm controlling you with my upper body. So I've got to be very, very aware. It's still advantageous, but it just seems a little more free-flowing than having something like a half guard. All right, side control now. Well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know when, when to hold him. Yep, there absolutely. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in the gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Second round, straight ahead. All right, so there's the horn. That means it's the end of the round. And get that man a singlet, man, right? Offensive wrestling on point tonight. That was a tutorial. That was every single takedown you could secure in a fight. He did it all the right way. He's beating his really? opponent to the finish before he can try to sprawl and respond. He's a step behind. If he's gonna stop these takedowns going forward, he needs to react a little quick. Oh, really using his reach advantage there as he lands the punch, DC. Position now, we'll see who transitions first. 
Well, you see all the grappling repetitions here. Just beautiful movement, seamless transitions on the ground. Over and over, he's not even doing things that you see in every jiu-jitsu gym around the country. All right, let's check out some of the action, DC, and how about the punching acumen by that fighter in that previous round? He does not waste anything. He does not loop punches. Everything's tight. Everything's precise. He's a sniper. We always talk about how he's a sniper. He is a sniper, and it showed in that exchange that allowed him to drop his opponent. Good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's going to be. Sound strike on the ground. Get out of there. Let's go. Do something. Oh, these are some serious punches from the top here. He's continuing to maintain good posture and making these strikes. He's doing a really good job of watching the up keep making his Top, he started to land brutal ground and pound until the fight was called off. Just a dominant performance from the top position. All right, the official decision is inside the octagon. Abraham That's where we find Bruce Buffer. Contest at one minute, 54 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Hamzat Bors Kamada. Well, we congratulate him on a huge knockout here tonight. He'll probably keep that smile while he's sleeping tonight after what he was able to produce here. He's going to be smiling for a really long time. When you get a knockout like that, not only do you 